Talk radio is crazy. He's on the government, government, government payroll. I just want to let you know that you're brilliant. And I like to smack him in the head. I am so pissed off and irritated right now at this whole freaking subject that I can't even stand. No phenomenon in recent times has so intimidated the establishment press. Think for yourself and question authority. We're American and damn proud of it. Button your lips, no talking. Get out. No talking. Get out. No talking. It's Question authority. Come on, everybody. Today we're going to try and say his name. Come on, everybody. Did he say a letter in his name? <laughs> Come on, everybody. Ed Till, Ed Till. Question authority. Come on, everybody. Ed Till, Ed Till. Come on, everybody. It is the Ed Till Show. Man, do we have a special guest to kick off this week. They call the frog. Learned on the corner about the school of hard knocks. Found out his rap could be his salvation. Well, now he's talking all across the nation. It's the end to show. It's the end to show. Come on, everybody. It's Ed Till. Now that you tune them in, you know what I mean. People call them up, discuss and never see. Love him or hate him, he's gonna have his say. He's gonna speak his mind each and every day. It's the Ed Till Show. It's the Ed Till Show. Come on, everybody. It's that tip. Yeah. Couldn't think of a better way to start off the week uh, than having a congressional candidate join us on the Ed Till Show Live. Uh, Sean Pignatelli, welcome from New Jersey's second district. It's a pleasure to have you on the show today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Ed. What makes a guy like you run uh, in this era where uh, politics has such a combative environment? What makes you want to jump in? Uh, I actually have three little ones, um, the oldest being 14. And I've just been watching what politics has been doing to our children and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that can agree that what our teachers union, what the politicians in general are, what they're all doing to our kids is just wrong. Okay, well, uh, let's get into some of that. One of the things that you think they're doing wrong, a congressman, congressperson can fix. Absolutely. Yes, go ahead. If you if you would list a, a couple of the things you see as a problem and you would fix them uh, by getting elected. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, one of the biggest things is it is now scientifically proven that a later start ch- uh, a later start time for our children goes a long way in mental health, and that we can jump right into Congress, and we can have all of our students starting at a later start time. Uh, Usually it's about 20 to 30 minutes later than the 8, 8.30 start, and that'll contribute a lot towards all children's mental health. Sean uh, Pignatelli is running for Congress but speaks like a father here, so uh, elaborate on that. Uh, You would make policy changes for the advantage of kids, and maybe uh, this is going to be a little bit different than what's been happening in public education. Uh, uh, talk about that, why that's important to you. Uh, well, yeah, like I said, I have three little ones, and I've kind of had the chance to watch exactly what the politicians, mostly the left side and the teachers union, are doing to them. Right. So by jumping right into Congress and getting some bills, proposed to the house i think that's going to go a long way and that's going to help protect our children the best we can at the moment yeah i I mean i'm trying to zoom in though on why you think it's a priority Uh, why is that start time of the school important to you something you'd like to change right away uh well 
I don't know how much everybody's been paying attention to statistics uh, with the whole COVID thing that we had for, geez, about two and a half years. Right on. We, we, we noticed a lot of children taking their own lives. And not only that, just their mental health in general has depreciated so much. And these kids are, are the ones who are going to take over our country. We need to do everything we can to protect them and make sure they're ready to take over this country. Fantastic, Sean. <clears throat> Zooming in on met- mental health there. Uh, talk to me about some of your priorities, including uh, veterans. I see them listed on your website, number one under the priorities uh, category. Uh, why are they an important issue for you in this election? Uh In my opinion, veterans should be everybody's heroes. They go overseas, they fight for our country, and then they come back and our government doesn't take care of them the way they should. We have so many veterans out there that are like just living check to check and they're still picking between bills, which one they're paying this month, which one they're paying next month. And that's ridiculous, in my opinion. Like, that's just wrong we should have some sort of benefits in place that show these veterans we actually care about what they've done for our country and we need to move forward with it get them the benefits and the help that they need especially the ones with the ptsd uh and not only that they need more funds to make sure that they can live happy lives for the rest of their lives. You know, um, this is something Donald Trump tackled years ago. Um, As you point out, still a problem. Why, in your opinion, has it taken so long to get this issue front and center and then to take real, uh, you know, substantive action on it? What's the holdup, do you think, Sean? Uh, I think it's the bills that are being proposed and our politicians are just looking at the amount of money that it's going to cost to get our veterans the benefits that they need. They're not looking at the person as a person. They're looking at them as a group of people with just a dollar sign next to it. And you you can't put a price tag on somebody's life. You just can't do that. Gotcha. So you want to make big change there. Um, Next, you mention the boys in blue, you write. Uh, Our boys in blue are the backbone and the security for all America. Uh, Why are they uh, listed as a priority of yours as a candidate uh, for Congress from New Jersey? Why? They, in my opinion, been completely ill-treated. They eat. You know, it's kind of like if you have a bushel of apples. I'm sure you're going to find maybe one or two in there that are bad that you got to throw away. Okay, I understand that. We're going to have a couple select individual police officers that are going to be, you know, those rotten apples that we're going to have to get out. However, most of our boys in blue, most officers have the same mindset as a typical person they're going out there they want to save lives they want to protect lives and they want to go home at the end of the day to see their family and the way the left has been attacking all police officers and saying they want to defund the police that's again just i think they're just missing common sense in general like we need this security let me let me drill down on this a little bit with you it's an important issue but it brings up something that's in a lot of these issues. When there's opposite opinions like this, are you stuck with forcing the other guy to do it your way? Or are you able to convince people to compromise with you? Absolutely. How would that that happen with the people you just said want to get rid of them altogether? How could you possibly do anything with people who are 100% opposite of you, it's a big challenge for a lawmaker. How do you go at that? How will you succeed at that? To be honest, it's all about sitting down at the table and proposing facts, not just blasting the other side with opinions, 
you have to present the facts to them. You have to show them that the statistics of the cities that have defunded the police so far have more crime, more murder. Like, and if you sit down and actually talk like two individual people at a table, I'm sure you're going to you're going to move forward. Yeah, on the you know, with all due respect, right? Isn't that all the public has been hearing? Isn't isn't talk just drowning uh, the public? Isn't everybody? Oh. Yeah. How could we believe any talk? Off an elected official is what my listeners ask me all the time. Ed, I don't care what side they're from. You know when they're lying, their mouths are moving. They go into these jobs for their own personal power. None of them make anything better. I go, wow, that is a tough assessment, but I will ask our guest, how do you overcome that? People are skeptical, cynical, sick of it, don't want any more speeches, think everybody's out for themselves, that is a tough road to hoe. Uh, And you're young, you have enthusiasm here. How do you break that stereotype down? To be completely honest, I was one of those individuals that were saying the same thing about our politicians. So why is it different? Yeah, exactly. Why is it any different with you? The the only difference I could tell voters is you have to actually look at who you're voting for. You don't want to put a millionaire in there that's going to cater to his donors. You want somebody like a next-door neighbor, somebody that you've lived next to, somebody that you know where he's coming from. He's a father. He he works. Uh, We need to start getting these politicians out that are in there and, like you said, are in there for their own personal gain. Right. And as soon as they're out and we have actual American individuals in there who think like individuals who, you know, want to pursue anything that their voters want them to pursue, that's when America is going to become great again. Very good. Sean uh, Pignatelli is with us. He's a congressional candidate for the second congressional district, U.S. Congress from New Jersey. Boy, I love this next category here. Agricultural workers. Fantastic that you bring them up as a priority. Why are they important to what you're trying to do with your candidacy? To be honest, they should be important to everybody. The The food that is on our tables for dinner, that comes from our farmers, our agriculture workers. We need to cater to them in order to cater to ourselves. And basically, that just means that if you want better tasting, healthier food on your table, you have to support these farmers. And it's been just way too long since the farmers had a voice at all in both Congress and the Senate. And we need to give them their voice back. All right. Uh, for example, what could you what could Congress do right now? They come together. You're successful in your candidacy. Uh, what kind of a law? What kind of a change are you pr- uh, proposing uh, necessary here? What would make this situation better? Right off the bat, I want to lower the income tax rate for all farmers. And by doing that, they'll have extra funds that they can use on uh better quality nitrates, and just better quality material in general, which is going to go a long way in making sure our food remains better tasting and healthier. Now, um, are they, uh, what's the tax burden? Maybe our listeners are not even aware of this. Uh, How significant is the tax burden on farmers? You want to take it from what it is now, what is it, and what do you want to take it down to? Well, basically, our farmers are currently paying the same as what I would consider our middle class workers. Uh, And that by itself is a huge issue because most of the money that they're gaining is not all profit, which a lot of people don't realize. When they sell, let's say, a bushel of apples, that money has to go back into, you know, those same things, the nitrates, the materials that they need in order to create those better foods. Okay. And it also goes into whatever maintenance they need. You know, if they had a tractor that broke down, there's, and our government right now is not allowing them to write off 
all of those things like they should be allowed to. Okay, so that's what you want to do. You want to lower the burden on them, make it easier to operate as a farmer. Absolutely. If you look at statistics, uh, a farmer that works 12 hours is actually equivalent in pay to a middle-class worker that only works six hours. So they're doing double the work and getting the same amount of money, and we have to fix that. Sean Pignatelli is a candidate for Congress. His website is Pignatelli, the way it sounds, P-I-G-N-A-T-E-L-L-I, for congress.com. Uh, go there, take a look at what he stands for. Uh, unions, jobs, and the economy. Wow. Uh, uh, let me remind myself, are you running as a Democrat or a Republican? Republican. Okay. So as a Republican, when I see jobs and unions on the same line, right away, I, I, I want to know more about this. What do you have to say as a candidate for Congress about unions, about union membership, et cetera? Go ahead. So I am a union carpenter. Uh, I am a third generation. I've been doing it for about 12 years now. Unions, in my opinion, are just a pure example of equality. Everybody gets paid the same. Everybody gets the same training. Everybody gets the same benefits. So in my opinion, it's best if we can keep that equality there. In order to help out our businesses, what we're looking at proposing in Congress is a bill that will lower all taxes for building American and buying American. So our bigger businesses, if they were to go and hire union workers, right. they'll get a they'll get a tax cut for that. Tax cut for hiring the union. Now, um is it going to be dollar for dollar? I have to say, union I love. I'm raised in New York City, understand the value of a uh, talented union professional, but that's top of the card. If you're building a house and you use a union guy to paint the wall, that's the most expensive paint job you're going to buy. So are we going to dollar for dollar this? Because I'm all in favor of union work. It's the most expensive work. How do we, how do we make sure that we're not hurting people when we're trying to help them? Right. Absolutely. I do want to try to make it dollar for dollar. Um, If you hire that union worker, you are absolutely correct. It's going to probably be the most expensive job you did. However, it's going to be the highest quality job you're having done as well. Right. So if we can get that tax cut and we can get these union workers to come and work on a house, work on uh, your barn, if you're an agriculture worker, we can get you that tax cut that makes that union worker the same price as just hiring somebody off the street who doesn't have the training and really doesn't know what he's doing and is basically just doing a guess and check. There you go. We don't like that at all. Uh, education and uh, right now on fire as an issue. Man, you got the uh, par- parental rights law in Florida where uh, you got parents very upset about what's being taught in curriculum, and you got more of these statutes being passed across the country for the same reason. How do you fix, uh, repair public education, Sean? What is wrong? Let's uh, do it the other way. List what needs to be fixed in public education. Where is it not hitting the mark? Uh, In my opinion, and I'm pretty sure almost everybody in my district agrees when it comes to education it's supposed to be math literature science history those are the things the kids should be learning in school and when we have issues come up like the whole crt or the the transgender classes that they want to throw in there Yes, you're going to have states push back because those states have parents that are going to continue to push back. All right, let's, they, let's um, jump in. Let's jump in on CRT. You mentioned it. Man, that is a, a really just a fiery issue. So how do you avoid CRT when you're teaching history? 
Kid puts up his hand. My parents said at dinner last night, uh, here's history, ba ba ba. And a teacher says, no, uh, we can't talk about that. Another kid says, why not? How, what's the real life way to navigate this? What do, what do we do in a history class? They want to bring up race. They think race is the most important thing. They think it's still a problem now, and they have their reasons. What do we do with this, and how does the government get involved in all of this? It looks like a what they used to call a sticky wicket. looks like a very tough issue here, but go for it. Tell me. Well, we have a, a teacher's union right now that is definitely in need of repair by itself. However, what Governor DeSantis did to, down in Florida, right. he basically told the teachers' union, look, you're going to teach our kids what they're supposed to learn in school and nothing else. And that's exactly how the All rest right. of that, our state does about. Right. That does sound a little dictatorial. That sounds like the opposite of Republican principles. The government saying, hey, I'll tell you what you can say. I'll tell you how you can phrase it. And some people go, oof, even if the government's right, who the hell are they now with the words and the sentences? Say Stalin was like that. Dictators do that. So uh, people get emotional on this issue. I get calls on this where, wow, they are worried. Uh, Try to set them at ease a little bit here. Uh, Go right ahead. How does this work in reality? The way it has to work is the majority of our country, parents, they want their children protected. Most of them do not want this CRT taught in school, and they don't want this the, the sexual transgender stuff that they've been throwing about lately. They don't want that stuff taught in school either. I'm a big fan of voting. I would get somehow this put onto the ballot, and I would let people vote on it. And you're going to see the majority of the population does not want this stuff taught. And basically what Governor DeSantis did was he took it a step further. He knew how his ballot would come out. So instead of, you know, putting it on the ballot, let's get it done right now so we can ensure that these children are protected and the parents are having their voices heard. You know, um, this is going to remain a dicey issue because, I don't know, that last part where you skip and you just go do it because you think you know, that's a tough one uh, for Americans, right? If they're on the other side of this issue, they have to shut up? Well, if they're on the opposite side of this issue, should they just be quiet? Go home? Don't, I mean, what is the alternative under First Amendment and all of this? this it's troubling to some people. You, you understand where they're coming from? Absolutely, absolutely. The one thing people have to remember is education schools are, are more like a business, and they need to have certain rules intact in order to protect, you know, what you would call their employees, the students. Gotcha. Like I said, right. I'm a big fan of actually just getting it on the ballot, right. letting everybody's voice be heard, right. and you know, go from there. Sure. However, because of how big of an issue this is and how many people it's affecting, we do have politicians that want to basically just get it done as quick as they can. And I do see a problem with that as far as a voter aspect goes, but they're also protecting the ones that need to be protected. And as far as the First Amendment goes, uh, by all means, you can voice your opinions as much as you want. Well, I guess he can't, right? I mean, isn't that the whole idea? That they don't want this expressed, right? That, that's the whole idea, right? No, you can't say, no, that's inappropriate. Now, a lot of people agree with saying no, no, can't talk about it. No, your opinion's not welcome now. You're in a public school classroom. You can't talk about that. A lot of people are comfortable with that. Other people say, you know, that's dangerous. Wow, just because I agree with what we're prohibiting today, we have to be, so you understand that sensitivity, right? When the government starts saying what you can say, it does, right, r- r- right away people's ears perk up. 
Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, does that wor- does like- it worry you? Does does it worry you to have a govern a government saying what's allowed to be said? Is that- absolutely, it does. Right? Yeah. It's, 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 it's- oh, absolutely. Gotcha. All right, I don't want to run out of time here before we get to gun control. It's on your list, and it's every single time there's a shooting, we hear half the country talk about gun control. Uh, When you list it as a priority, why is this a big issue in your candidacy? Go ahead. Uh, Pretty pretty much, in my opinion, we all should be able to purchase guns anytime we want, whether it's for— recreational purposes whether it's for protection purposes or even just you know going to a shooting range i guess you would call that entertainment purposes okay we should all be allowed to purchase a gun anytime we want and we have to remember one of our great presidents had said it's not the gun that's killing people it's the people who have the guns that are killing people this is true so what could make the situation any better? It looks super toxic. It looks like it's always, a f- you know, I'm 66 years old. So I was 12 when they introduced the first handgun legislation. And it was because Bobby Kennedy had been shot with a handgun at close range uh, and people watched him lying dead on the floor. So they were like, we have to do something. So now I'm a senior citizen there's been zero progress my entire life. Um, what could make things better on this issue uh, from your opinion uh, and your standpoint? Well, we're doing most of the things that, in my opinion, are probably the biggest things, mm. which include the background checks and, you know, the the few amendments that they have been making so that way you can't carry as much ammunition with you. However, Hmm. anybody should have that same right to purchase a weapon. And we're not making it so you have concealed carry on the streets. The easier it is to purchase a weapon, the more people are going to go into the store and purchase a gun. Mm -hmm. The harder we make it to purchase a gun, you're going to have more illegal ghost guns out there where people are just buying parts. They're assembling them at their house. And then they're using them, and they can't be traced back to them. So they're thinking to themselves, let me do it this way so I don't get caught, or I can basically just take advantage of the system. Right. So what helps it? What what would make things move forward? It feels like we're stuck with this, right? We have a bunch of mass shootings. We have uh, street crime on the rise all over the place. So what is 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 crime part of this issue or maybe it's not? Help help me understand what what could be improved here. What can we do that's better than what we have? I like to consider it two separate issues. The when it comes to our second amendment, these are legal abiding citizens that are going and purchasing their weapons and like I said most of the time they're out in the woods using them, hunting a couple rabbits, a deer or they're protecting their own land. Mm. When it comes to the crime, that's where those ghost guns come into effect. Uh, And yes, we have a lot of crime on our streets. We also have a lot of prosecutors that want to allow these criminals to commit crimes and then just walk out and go do it again. So we need to hold all prosecutors accountable for what they're allowing to happen right now. Sean, I have to say, this is an incredible half hour. We covered a lot of issues. I wish you well. Uh, You sound like you have a lot of hope for the country. Do you mind talking about that? Uh, What is your vision? If we could get things together here, uh, tell us what it would be like uh, after you get elected. Well, there'll there'll probably be a lot of bills being proposed in the House right away. Um, And like I said at, you know, the top of the half hour, I have three children. My envision is that these three children grow up and when they hit the age of, let's say, 30, they're living loving lives. They're able to have families because of a a good job. They don't have to worry about 
you know, going to a grocery store and getting shot in a parking lot. Like, we just need to step back for a moment and see how much of a difference all everything is taking an impact on everybody's lives. And we need to jump forward, fix it, and allow our children to grow up the way they should. Sean, are you one of those persuasive guys that changes minds in the room? When they put you in the football huddle, do we change the play? Are you the relief pitcher that says we're going to do things different? Give us an example of where you've tackled a really tough environment and you got something done. Because Congress does look like a horrible place to try and make progress. But I want to I want to hope that we could do better. Give us an example. Can you can you make things change? Are you a change agent? Well, if we're going into a huddle, the play is going to stay the same. <laughs> the the big problem is getting other I guess you could say Congress representatives yeah. to agree yes. with your play. And yes. yes. Like I said, like that, you have to walk in there with facts. You can't just right, say, but, right. oh, well, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, when you get those facts, what do you bring to them that makes the change? Everybody's going to bring the same facts, but only some people get agreement. Only some people can make the change. So that's what I'm saying. Why do you believe you could do it? You're going to find people the opposite of you. You're going to find people with long speeches against everything you say. They've got, uh, for everything that's proposed, a reason not to go along with you. That's our country over the last decade, right? I don't know where you would find who's getting along. State legislatures? No way. U.S. Congress? No way. Executive branch? No way. Supreme Court? No way. So with all of the disagreement, how does any agreement happen, do you think? Well, that's going to start with our voters. And like we said earlier, our voters really need to look at who's running right. and w- what they're running on. Are they, you know, an average Joe, just somebody who lives next door to you that you, you know he's a person that's going to stand up for children? Right. He's a person that's going to stand up for our First and Second Amendment rights? Or is he what we could call a, a typical politician that has you know, two, three million dollars in his bank account. He still has donors giving him money. And every time he walks into Congress, he's voting based on their views and not his voters views in his district. Beautiful. Beautifully said, because let's face it, we covered a lot of important people, police officers, mothers and fathers with kids in school, taxpayers, agricultural workers. That's who you stand for, right? Those are your people. Yes, absolutely. The average people out there working their butts off and not reaping the rewards like some of these politicians in Washington are. Dude, fantastic visit with us. Uh, I'm very excited about your candidacy. You bring great energy. Get in there and get it done, Sean. Uh, We are going to stay in touch with you, uh, follow what happens in the outcome of the election. Best of luck in the second congressional district in New Jersey. Great having you on the show today, man. Yes, thanks for having me, Ed. Take care, buddy. Uh, The website is Pignatelli for Congress. I'll spell that out for you. P-I-G-N-A-T-E-L-L-I for Congress.com. Stand by. We're going to talk to James in Winter Park. It's the Reedy Creek Improvement District. Wow, what a